We are told so and so is dead and I want to delve a little bit in that today so that in this series of let my people go it is a series that God has given me and commissioned me and so I'm moving forward in that and uh, this uh, manner of teaching uh, from the Word of God, I'm going to be uh, doing some uh, scriptures, many of them today, and then we are going to pray together <clears throat> at the end of the day because there is no reason for any one person to remain in a pit or to remain in a prison which is not a prison that is known in this nation. So Let's go straight to the word of God. You know, the, the, the Bible says in John chapter number 10 and verse 10, And the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But to steal, kill, and destroy. Those are the three things that the thief comes to do. The thief here is the enemy. Satan, the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And you know, when we say that let my people go, we say anybody that is stolen, anybody that has been killed, anybody that is being destroyed <clears throat> must be let go because God has already paid the price for them to be delivered, to go free, and to be blessed. The Bible says in the book of, you know, when Jesus was speaking about pits and uh, prisons, because pits are a present day reality. If your guide is blind or you are blind and you have nobody to guide you through life, then you shall fall in one of the pits. Jesus said, let them alone in Matthew 15 and verse number 14. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. If a blind man guides a blind man, both of them shall fall into a pit. That is what Jesus said in Matthew 15 and verse number 14. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man guides a blind, uh, if, if a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. And that is why we are seeing both pastors and lay people falling into pits. And in this pit, I mean places where souls of men are hidden. Uh, where men, you know, a man is a spirit. A man is not a soul. It's not a body. A man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. Now, listen carefully. The Bible says also in the book of uh, uh, Proverbs chapter number 26 and verse 27, talking about pits. Pits are a present day reality. It says that he who digs a pit will fall into it. And he who rolls a stone, uh, it will come back on him. Yani anaye chimba shimo ataingia mwenyewe. Yule ambaye anasukuma jiwe litamwangukia ye au litarejea juu yake mwenyewe. Now listen, that scripture, we also see it captured again in Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and who so breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite him. Now this one, the other one is saying, he who uh, digs a pit shall enter into it or shall fall into it and he who pushes a stone or rolls a stone it will fall back to him the stone is supposed to be it was being rolled as a weapon of war and that is the same thing that uh, is being uh, spoken of here any weapon fashioned against you should not prosper on you it should prosper on the person that fashioned that particular weapon. Listen carefully to me right now. That when somebody digs a pit for you, 
they are supposed to enter into that same pit. It is not supposed to be you entering into that pit. But why is it that today we see people who are entering into pits that they didn't dig, but other people dug them for them? Continue uh, listening to this and follow very closely because it's a short teaching which I know shall liberate your life. When somebody digs a pit for you, it is a weapon of war. It is not supposed to prevail against you because no weapon fashion against the child of God is supposed to prosper. But when the Bible says in Hosea that my people perish for lack of knowledge, Marifa ndiyo kitu ambacho tuokoa. Wakati Yesu wame tuokoa kwa damu yake, kinacho baki ni marifa. If you do not have knowledge on how to escape the pits of life, then you fall into the pits of life and you begin to wonder why is your life in a pit somewhere. Listen, when somebody digs a pit, they're supposed to enter there. When they break an edge, a serpent will bite them. But why is it that other people are opening the edge and allowing serpents to bite people? Remember, a serpent is not a snake. A serpent is a demonic manifestation. It can be a snake, it can be a tree, it can be a person, it can be a genie, it can be a, a whatever kind of an animal, whatever kind of a form that is appearing to someone. Remember the tree that Jesus cast. It was not a tree, it was a serpent. Because he went in there, he wanted to eat some fruit. The, the, the tree lied to him that it had fruit. But when he came close, there was no fruit. And he cast it. He didn't cast a normal tree. It was a serpent. I want you to understand that Goliath was a serpent. He was not a man. He was a serpent. And that is why David, when he noticed that, he killed him with the first blow. I want you to understand that serpents can manifest. The fiery serpents in the wilderness, they were not snakes. Because when they beat the people, the people didn't go to an hospital somewhere to be healed. They had only to look upon a, 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 serpent, a, a serpent of bronze. And when they turned and looked at it, they got healed. I want you to understand that these are spiritual beings which are set loose. Have you not heard people say that I was beaten by a snake in the dream? And when I woke up in the morning, the poison of a snake was in my body. They see even where it beat them. But I want you to understand, if you fear, then it begins to work against you. But when you understand how to counter it, then it cannot do anything to you. Why do they dig holes for people? Why is it that witches? Why is it that magicians? Wafunga majini, ma wachawi, madarwesh, watu wote ambao wanafanya kazi na uganga na uchawi, kwa nini wanachimba mashimo kwa ajili ya watu? Why do they dig pits for people? Listen, there are many reasons why they do so. And we are not going to go into the reasons why they do so. But I want to point out one reason, one major reason. The major reason why they dig pits for people, it is because of their nature, where they are coming from. They are, those people who dig pits for other people, they are not human beings at all. They are brood of vipers. They are serpents themselves. They are children of the devil. They are born of their father, the devil. Their nature is the one that dictates that they should live a certain kind of life, a, a life of destroying humanity. A life of pushing diseases and sicknesses into human beings. A life of tormenting men and women day and night. Why? Because themselves, the extension of the kingdom of the devil. They are not human beings, although they walk 
in flesh and blood. But it's not in flesh and blood. In flesh and blood is human. I want you to understand that very categorically and very clearly. Not everything that is walking around in human skin is a human being. So why do they dig pits for people? Why do they uh, take people and hide them in prisons? Not in committee, not in kingongo, but in prisons in the spiritual realm. Why? Because of where they come from, where they are instructed to steal, kill, and destroy. That is their threefold ministry that they are carrying on on earth because it is a ministry of their father, the devil. Because, why do I say so? Because even without reasons, they still dig pits for people. Let's see it in the scripture. Even without reasons, they, can, they dig pits for people. That is why those people say, what have I done for people to be against me? What have I achieved for people to be uh, envious of me? You don't need to do anything to have them attack you. I want you to have that in your mindset because it will help you when you go to fight. The book of Psalms that is that 5 and verse 7 says, For without cause they have hid for me their net in a pit. For without cause. So there is no reason, but they have still gone ahead to dig uh, a pit for David without cause, without a reason. They have gone ahead and they have hidden, they have they have dug a pit for David without a reason. They have come to a place where this is David, but they have no reason to attack him. And yet they have hidden a net for him in a pit. Without cause have they digged a pit for my soul. Without cause, without a reason, they dig holes. To put on what is a soul. The soul of, of a man is the one that came into a man when God breathed into his nostrils. Remember, God created a spirit man in his likeness, in his image. God is spirit. And if he created us in his own image, then we are spirits. But he created an encasement, a body for the man. But the spirit could not raise the soul, the, the body, the clay, because the clay was not connected to the spirit at all. So God breathed into the nostrils of that man, and man became a living soul, that there was a connection between the spirit man and the clay. And so man, the spirit, relates with the, with the, with the, with the body or with the encasement through the means or through the instrumentation of his soul. That is why before your soul is educated to get instructions from, his, from the spirit, it cannot give instructions to the body to follow what the spirit is saying. And when the soul is taken captive, the body obeys the, the, the master of the soul. The soul, in the soul we find intellect. We find emotions and we find the will. It is in the will of a man where decisions are made. It is in the intellect of a man where education is as a seat. The seat of education in a man is in his soul, in his intellect. And the, the intellect is also known as the mind of a man. The intellect is also known as the mind of a man. And the emotions follow the decisions that are made by the will of a man. So, we educate the man, the soul of a man. And therefore, decision, he takes decisions based on the education he has received. When you receive spiritual education, you begin to make decisions based on the spiritual education that you have received. But when you get the education that is there in the world only, 
you only know the lower class of education and your soul cannot relate with the higher life, with the higher principles of life. For example, when you are sick in your body and the only education you know is the education of taking medicine three times a day and you get healed, then you'll have to go through that process which is a lower class process. But if you know that we can lay our hands on the sick and the sick shall recover, then you lay your hand on the sick. We see nothing being transmitted through your hands. But you are following a spiritual education that your soul has received and you are healed. And we say you have been healed by faith. I want you to understand that is an education of your soul and education in your intellect in forming the decisions that you make and the emotions follow the decisions that you make. Okay, now listen carefully. Why is it that when people are taken into pits, whether, you know, you can, body can be taken into a pit and they are still alive. There are two ways that, up, that happens. When a human is born on earth, in their soul there is a great wealth. And those people that use that, they are able to see the deposit in the soul of a man, even when that man is a little child. And an infant. And when they see the deposit that child, they attempt to steal it. Sometimes they succeed to it. Sometimes they don't succeed. So when they go out, when they go out to steal from a human being, remember I've told you that a human being, when that human being is still an infant, let's see it in the word of God in the book of uh, in the book of Job, chapter number 24 and verse 9, they spoil the sucking father's children. Job 24 and verse 9, they spoil the sucking fatherless children, that is the orphan and put the, the poor in prison. Listen, the fatherless and the poor suffer the same fate. That is why it is very important to have a father. If someone is born and they are born without a spiritual cover, a spiritual father, then they can be stolen. Their goods are spoiled. Their goods are taken as splendor. Wanaibiwa vitu vile wamekuja nazo duniani. Every child is born clenching their fist, holding what they have come with. But many of the children are empty because whatever they came with was taken away at arrival. Now, look at it this way. The other day they showed a CCTV footage of some aeroplane attendants perusing through bags and ransacking some customers' luggages to take away the valuables. That is what the enemy does. When a child is being born on earth, the enemy knows that the child has come loaded. And so before anybody knows how to protect what the child has come with, they take it away. They take their star away, or they, they take a part of their wealth away. Through witchcraft means. The Bible says that they spoil the sucking fatherless children and put the poor in prison. They take them and they put them in prisons and you see them growing up and it's only the body that is growing up you don't see them growing economically financially materially in wisdom in stature in understanding they are growing in stature only and they're not growing in grace growing 
uh, in, in wealth, growing in understanding, growing in all the spheres of life. Why? Because they were spoiled at birth. When they were sucking, they were, their wealth was taken away. In the Amplified Version, that scripture in Job 24 verse 9 reads this way. The violent man whose wickedness seems unnoticed he is a violent man. He is wicked, but his wickedness seems not to be noticed. Those are the kind of people we have today. If you are to be asked today, who oh, are your enemies? You may point your finger to the wrong person. Because the person you think is so close to you, a friendly person, they might actually be the greatest enemy that is taking away that which belongs to you. Because the Bible says, the violent man whose wickedness seems unnoticed pluck the fatherless infants from the breast. Pluck the fatherless infants from the breast to sell them or make them slaves. Listen carefully. To sell them or make them slaves and take the clothing on the poor for a pledge. Can you imagine the man that was without clothes living in the tombs when Jesus came and cast out the demons and closed the shop of one tycoon by commanding the demons to enter into the swine of that tycoon. 2,000 pigs, they all drowned in the sea. That man's business was closed down that day. And the star that he was operating with was restored to the man that was living in the tombs. The following day, the Bible says, the man was seen sitting down in his right mind and having his own clothes on. Your clothes are your protection. When your protection is taken away, you become a prey. You become you become Somebody is imprisoned. Why do I say so? Isaiah, the Bible says in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 42, and verse 22, the Bible says, But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in halls, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. They are not being restored, not because God doesn't have power to restore. God has enough power to restore, but God is waiting for a man to say restore. Why? Because believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established but when it comes to matters prosperity believe in the prophets and you shall prosper god has squarely given and transferred the the prosperity docket into the hands of the prophets it is not god that causes men to prosper today it is his prophets if you do not have a prophet in your life you better be under a prophet because unless there is someone to prophesy in your life, prosperity remains a stranger to you because prosperity is tied to a prophet. Listen carefully. These people in Isaiah 42 and verse 22, they are people that are number one, robbed, number two, spoiled. And they are snared in halls. And they are hid in prison houses. And they are taken there for a prey and none deliver it. For a spoil and none say restore. Listen, there must be somebody who is saying restore on your behalf. So that you can be restored. You have to believe with someone was sent by God and there came a man sent by God or sent from God his name 
was John the Baptist. His name was John, and he came preaching and ministering unto Israel. I want you to understand uh, very well that when people are hidden in prisons in the spiritual realm, in the world we are told so and so is dead, and yet they are not dead. These people, when they are stolen, they are hidden in prisons. They are not in heaven. They are not in hell. They are hidden in pits. These pits in the spiritual realm, you know when Jesus spoke and said, I was angry and you fed me. In the book of, uh, let me get you that scripture that says that I was, I was uh, in prison and you came to see me. I want you to see in Matthew chapter number 25 and verse 43. The Bible says, I was a stranger and he took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison and you visited me. So, is this the prisons that we have? Will that give rewards? for the people no these are spiritual reasons where people taken out of life are hidden in prison these prisons are not hell these prisons are not in heaven they are in the heavenly places in the heavenly places witches and believers appear there many times Witches take away people and they hide them in heavenly places, in pits and in prisons. They put them in chains. They put them in bottles and they close it tightly and they throw it in the sea. And these people cannot be seen on earth and yet they are not gone to heaven. But we are told so and so is dead and we are shown a body. And we bury that body thinking that we are burying so and so. But we are left with questions. We feel like, no, this person is not gone anywhere. But there is nobody to tell us that it is true. You see them in your dreams. You see them pleading with you and asking you, please, why don't you come and rescue me? I'm being tormented in this prison, in this pit. But you think it is just a dream. No, it is not just a dream. That person is pleading with you and you rebuke them and tomorrow they come again and you rebuke them and they come again because they know you are born again and you can rescue them but when you don't have the education that these people are alive then you you, you are scared and you push them away instead if somebody appears to you in a dream and they are pleading with you and you know that person is presumably that person is termed as dead just the other day last year last month 10 days uh 10 ma 10 months ago a year ago and they are coming to you in dreams and they are pleading with you to rescue them then you need to call them back because they are not gone anywhere many people that resurrect are not gone to heaven or to hell they come back from the spiritual realm. They come back from the heavenly places. They are hidden in prisons and in pits. Kuna wachawi ambao wamechimba mashimo yao na wanaweka watu. Wanawakusanya wanadamu katika mashimo yao. Wametengeneza prison zao, jela zao, wanafungia watu. And those are the ones about tunapambana nao mpaka waachilie mateka wao. Kwa sababu mateka wale lazima waachiliwa wareje waendele na maisha yao. Ilikuambia ya kwamba akifa mtu kwa mazingira ya kutatanisha usimzike. Na kama umezika usifukue kaburi. Jo, we know how to call them because awako kaburi. Wameondolewa. There are few ways of being able to ascertain 
whether somebody has died a real death or not. If somebody dies and they appear in dreams pleading, that person is not gone anywhere. If somebody dies and you go and you take the measurements and you, uh, you, 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 you go and get a coffin for them, but on the day that you want to put them in the coffin, they can't fit in there. That is not the person. Whatever you are burying is not him, although he looks like him. He appears to be like him. If somebody is dead, take them to the morgue or wherever you store them. And when you carry the casket, this person is extraordinarily heavy. Heavier than, than the person that you know. That person is not the one inside there. If you have somebody who is dead and after, a few, after the days that they are in the morgue, you still go and pick your person, put them in the, in the coffin, and they are sweating. That person is not going anywhere. If I can tell you many, many uh, things that you can use to check whether your person is really dead or not. And you can be able to call them back. And God is bringing them back in their numbers. I want to uh, conclude by saying this. When the reason why we are going out to declare these things now and in this generation is because fear and pits have gripped the people today. People are living in fear. You don't know whether you shall complete your years. Every accident, as I told you the other day, is a pre-planned occurrence. There is nothing like an accident. Nothing. Totally, there is nothing called an accident. Accidents are not accidental. They are planned. Every accident that takes away a life, it is a planned occurrence to take away that life. It is planned by people who are monitoring it. One day, let me tell you this, let me give you this example. One day, uh, my cousin who was deeply in Satanism, uh, his name was uh, Kyoko. This boy, not, not a boy, he's a, he's a grown up man, he was working in the city of Nairobi. But one day he decided to sacrifice me to, the, to his demons, together with his mother, uh, together with his grandmother, and together with one of his angles, who was of the same age as him. And so they planned how they are going to sacrifice me on the 30th of December 2002 at noon. And uh, the man went and prepared himself and he came to where I was cultivating in the shamba, uh, in the village. Because you know in December, many people in this part of the world, they go into the villages. So the man came and he stood at the end of our shamba and he did some incantations. As he was doing it, I was awakened by the spirit and I looked at him and I saw what he was doing. And I spoke to one of my friends that we were digging, uh, cultivating together with him. And I told him that guy is doing something uh, demonic. And I didn't explain. Then the guy went out from there and he began to, to tell people that uh, we are in Misha Malaysia. That guy cannot do anything now. I've already finished with him. He's going to die uh, very soon. Anytime now. And you know people feared that family so much. So they knew if this guy is speaking this way, that man may be on his way to the grave. But thank God because we have power to stop any planned death in the name of Jesus Christ. So the man went and prepared whatever he prepared. And on that particular day, on that year of December 2002, it is the same day that President Kibaki was being sworn in as a president for the first time. I was on the road and something got hold of me on the road and closed my ears. I could not hear anything. I could not even hear the vehicles coming. And so I was held on the road. And then something uh, amazing happened. I came to the gate to their home and I stood there as a zombie, not knowing what to do. But I felt a hand of, of wind. It's like a spiritual hand, like the wind blew me out of the way, out of the road. And as it did so, a vehicle passed by where I was standing. 
that vehicle could have knocked me down. But it never because we have God who is swifter than any disaster. And it moved all the way to the gate to our compound. And it stood there and Kyoko alighted from that vehicle. Remember he was the one that was sent to come and kill me with those witchcraft uh, paravenarias uh, Ambassador Kwame prepared. So when the vehicle stopped, he alighted and he began to play with the conductor of the vehicle. And they, it was like a fighter scaffold of some kind. So they began to, 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 to chase one another along the road as the vehicle was moving along with them. A few meters from there, the, that same vehicle ran over Kyoko, killing him instantly. When it killed him, I was rushing to go and help him not to be uh, beaten by those guys, uh, by the conductors and the driver. Because I thought it was a scuffle and a fight. And I felt like, ah, he's my cousin. Why should I, you know, uh, see him being fought by these guys? So I was running, coming to help him, and I was stopped by a voice from heaven. The heavens opened at once. And the light flashed from heaven. And I saw the feet at the throne of God. I saw his feet. And a word came down from heaven. And he said, that is one. It knocked me until I stopped. When I walked again, I found Kyoko lying dead. Those people come from where I come from. They know who Kyoko is. And they know the home. And they know the people I'm talking about. And let me tell you, that man died that day. As he was dying, their cow died simultaneously at the, at where they were grazing. And a signal was sent to his uh, uh, aunts who were staying that time in, 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 in Europe. A signal was sent to them and they called home asking, what is it that has gone wrong at home? The devil's kingdom knew somebody is dead, but it is not Fred, the one we wanted to kill. It is the person we sent to kill is the one who has died. May the Lord make sure that every enemy that will come to kill you, they die. Because the Bible says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall raise against you in judgment, that tongue shall you condemn and you shall not allow a witch to live. We have a way of killing them. And they die. As I want us to kill some who are disturbing you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every witch that is risen against anyone. That is watching and listening to me right now. I cast that witch with a curse. I declare death upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. And I rescue your children. Let my people go, says the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Listen carefully. I want us to pray and call anybody that is in any prison. Because God doesn't want them to remain in those prisons. We are people who are in prisons. Your neighbors, your friends, your children... People that you know who are, who you are told that so and so is dead. So and so was knocked down by a vehicle. And yet it was not that person. That person is sent into a house and they are serving uh, somebody that is your neighbor. And they even come to mourn with you. And they tell you, oh, pole, pole sana mtoto wako, uh, sasa meondoka, ni okubali ya kwa mtoto wako wa mekufa. Mtu anagongwa na gari na kumbe si yeye, wanamchukua. Wanaenda na mficha. Kuna moja ambaye nafikiria kwamba akufa kule nyumbani kwetu. Nina muita katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Kwa sababu ninajua. Mungu alikuwa meniongeresha habari zake before. Bahada amda nasikia kwamba iti amegongwa na gari. Akafa kule Nairobi mjini. And yet I know. Pale kwenye, kwenye vijiji zile ambazo wachawi wapo. Huwa wanatoa kafara watu. Kila wakati wakiwa na sherehe Lazima afe mtu. Kuna jamaa moja kule kwetu, kazini yangu mwingine kule kwetu, in a distant cousin, ambaye aliwekea watu sherehe akawachinjia kijiji. Watu wakala nyama, wakala wakafurai. Lakini katika kule kula nyama, moja akawa nakula zaidi kuliko wale wengine. Akala nyama, kesho yake akaja kula kichwa. 
wakaenda wakakula kichwa ya ngombe vizuri wakamaliza walipomaliza akaenda akaingia kwa nyumba akajinyonga yule jamaa haja jinyonga ayupo kaburini yule jamaa siku akiitwa watu wakisikiza ujumbe ule ambao anahubiri na wamlete walete jina yake kwetu tukimuita katika jina la Yesu yule jamaa atarudi jina lake anaitwa Bon atarudi tu atarudi na kwambia ukweli hayupo kaburini amechukuliwa yuko pale kwenye boma ya majirani wale ambao walikuwa wametengeneza ile sherehe yuko pale yuko pale hakuna mali ambapo ameenda wanamchukua wao wanaweka mtu kitu kingine pale mkija mnapata fulani kajinyonga kumbe haja ajinyonga amechukuliwa akawekwa kwenye boma ya mtu nataka uelewe hivi mtu wa Mungu ya kwamba god is not a respecter of persons yule jamaa mwenye aliwekea watu sherehe kabla ajaanza kuwekea watu sherehe usiku mmoja nimelala nikaamshwa na Mungu aka tukakutana na yule jamaa ambaye anachukua chukua watu pale jamaa tukakutana na siku zake zimehesabiwa nataka uelewe ya kwamba hatuwezi kuanza injili ya aina hii na akaendelea kufanikiwa katika kuchukua watu na kuwaficha katika tunyumba twake nataka uelewe ya kwamba Yesu alipomponya wa makaburini alimfilisisha aliyekuwa amemtuma kaburini wale watu wameondolewa vitu vyao wakirudishwa na vitu vyao vikirudi na wale ambao walikuwa wamefanikiwa sana kutumia nyota za watu kutumia mali ya watu kutumia akili za watu kwa wakirudi na wale na wao watafilisika na kuelewa vizuri ya kwamba god is fighting for his people and he will definitely fight properly siku moja Mungu amenionyesha huyo jamaa akiwa kitambo sana akiwa ajaanza kupata magari Mungu akanionyesha tukakutana hivi uh, sokoni akashuka kwenye gari ambayo ina mimina maji yanamiminika yanatirika kutoka kwa hiyo gari akaniambia nimechoka sana nimetoka kule baharini kule Mombasa kule baharini kule kumbe alikuja baharini kuchukua mashetani akarudi akirudi na mimi nikafunguliwa television ya kiroho tukapatana na ye. akashtuka kwamba ameshaniambia kutoka pale vita zikaanza akakaa kidogo akanunua kagari kamoja alafu baadaye akanunua ile niliyomuona nayo na kwa sababu amefanya hivyo wakati umefika sasa nitakapompiga atapigwa kweli na wataona matendo ya Mungu makuu katika ulimwengu walio hai na watatoka watu katika boma yake waonekane wakiwa hai watu walioambiwa kwamba wamekufa kwenye kile kijiji watachomoka kutoka kwenye nyumba zake wataonekana na watamtaja hadharani na ye atafilisika na wao watafanikiwa kwa sababu Mungu ni Mungu wa kuokoa na njia za kutoka mautini ziko pamoja na Mungu wetu. Ningependa kwamba tuombe katika dakika hii. Ebu na tuombe. Uko tayari tuombe kama una mtu ambaye amekufa kwa mazingira ya ajabu ajabu. If you have somebody that is dead and you are you feel upon this person is not gone anywhere. I want you to believe together with me and you can call me thank you for those who have uh, sent me in the inbox and those who have commented with the names of their people that are, are, are already uh, dead i want us to call them give me a call my number is public then we shall call them uh, together i already prayed in the name of jesus for them to come back if you have somebody who is uh, who was growing normally and then they got to a place where they became retarded mentally retarded that person is not in that body in that body you are feeding something different many of the people that we are saying they are mad they are not mad mwanadamu mwenyewe aliondoka wakapachika jini pale jini lile lazima lijifanye kuwa wazimu ili msiligundue ya kwamba ni jini ndio maana linakula takataka na alifi kwa sababu gani kwa sababu si mtu ndio maana linanyeshewa na pita na huko na lingojeki alipati na malaria na naumwa na umbu kila mahali ni kwa sababu ni lijini liko ndani ya yule mwili nataka kama una watu wa aina hiyo nipigie simu niandikie sms na tutaongea na wewe tutajadiliana na kisha tutapata kuomba na Mungu atakurejeshea mtu wako it doesn't matter whether they died a year ago 10 years 20 years ago, 5 years, uh, last year, last month, they have just been taken to the morgue. 
God is able to restore them back to life. And Jesus is Lord. So, can we pray right now? Get ready. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people. Thank you because of your plan concerning their lives. Thank you because you are the one who sent me with the word. Let my people go. It's you who said it and who sent me to say it. And therefore, right now, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak unto the principalities and powers. Let my people go. I speak unto every witch and every witch doctor and every uh, evil man that is taking, taking people into spiritual prisons. I command you right now, let my people go. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody killing people and harvesting them into their prisons and into their pits and into their houses and into their cars and into their places where they keep people and they come and they tell us so and so is dead. I command fire into those prisons. I command fire into those pits. I command fire into those prison houses. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever those prison houses are, in people's bellies, in people's houses, in people's cars, in people's companies, and in places of worship, I command fire to burn those prisons and Tear down the chains and let people go free in the name of Jesus. I command you, come back, be restored. I command you, restore the people. Be restored in Jesus' name. These are a people that are taken captive. They are robbed and they are spoiled. And they are ensnared in holes. And they are hid in prisons, prison houses. And they are taken away for a prey. And there is nobody that says restore. But I command you now, be restored from wherever you are, come forth. Lazarus, wherever you are, Lazarus, come forth in the name of Jesus. Come forth in the name of Jesus and be thou restored to life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare and decree that your children are well wherever they are and I command a restoration. I command an awakening upon the people of Kenya that they will begin to understand that they don't need to lose people. They don't need to be convinced that people are dead when, the, when they are not dead. They don't need to be convinced, bury this and accept and move on. When they are actually being duped into believing that somebody is dead when they are not dead. I pray, oh God, enlighten the people of this nation. Let people wake up in the name of Jesus Christ from their slumber and let them know that witchcraft and sorcery and Freemason and the worshipping are taking away people into prisons and into pits and they are hiding them to use them for their own benefit. And they tell us the people are dead. I pray that people will awaken and know that these people can come back to life and, and live together with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the understanding shall go from this screen. I release the understanding that you have given unto me. I open the minds of people to understand and to know that Jesus, you raise people back to life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you so much and favor you. Call me write to me, inbox me, comment. Let me know if you're understanding this. Let me know if it is ministering to you. Let me know and call, call me so that you can pray together. And if you feel that you are being blessed, support this work. Let us know that you are being blessed and you are willing to support the work of God. Support it in whichever way that God is going to minister to you. Don't just be blessed and stay there. Be a partaker. Be part and parcel of those who are encouraging the men of God, who are encouraging the apostolic grace upon my life to continue to reach more and more people. The gospel is free. Freely we have received and freely we give. But to take it out, it is very expensive. God bless you so much as you consider standing together with me to take this gospel to the ends of the earth. God bless you so much and favor you. And do you well, I desire that you receive back that which belongs to you. 
I desire that you see the people that were dead and you buried something. I desire that you see them come back home. When they come back home, don't dig out the grave. They are not there. Whatever was buried there was nothing. Receive them back and come with them to church. And we shall celebrate and glorify the name of the Lord. You are blessed. Shalom. And favor be yours. May you defeat all your enemies. Every weapon fashioned against you. May it not prosper. And every mouth that will rise against you in to judge you. And to condemn you in any way. May you condemn it in the name of Jesus. May you have power to condemn it in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you in Jesus name. See you tomorrow as we continue with the series, Let My People Go. You are blessed. Amen and amen.